Welcome to Walk About the Galaxy, the functional astronomy podcast. Barely. I don't know. <laughs> where the science is universal, the opinions are personal, and the trivia is mathematohistorical. <laughs> sure, sure. I like it. Okay. We are Strange Charm and Top, the Astro Quarks, also known as Josh Caldwell. Addie Dove. And Jim Cooney. Coming to you from the Walkabout Studios at the University of Central Florida. Check out our website, walkaboutthegalaxy.com, where you can choose a sweet Walkabout t-shirt yes. and explore past episodes. Be sure to stick around at the end of this episode for the adorable jokes we sprinkle into our closing credits. Our stumpers are game-related. Ooh. Yes. Jim. Yeah. Not ya. Yeah. Za, Za or Joe. Oh, I, I see what you're getting at here. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, the, the clear answer is Joe. Okay. J O Joe. J O Joe. Which means what exactly? It's a term of endearment, I believe, from, from Scottish. Okay. It's like, you're my Joe. You're my you Joe. Guys are, but, you know, J O. Is this a thing? Yeah. It is a thing. Why is this it is, a thing? This is Scrabble related. Uh, Josh knows uh. I play, uh, I like to play Scrabble and. Uh, uh, the Z and the J are, of course, both high point tiles, but also difficult to play because uh, a lot of times you end up playing two letter words or overlapping other words. So you make two letter words, and there are very few mm -hmm. two letter words with the high point tiles. Za is the only two letter Z word, and J O is the only two letter J word. And Za means what? Za means pizza. I was like, like I'm gonna give me some Za, like, bro. Isn't it like apostrophe Z A though? Uh, they've decided no. Yeah. <laughs> Scrabble dictionary is a, Scrabble, is a yeah. The Scrabble dictionary scrubs from a whole pile of different dictionaries, and if it's anywhere in any of those dictionaries, it gets put in the Scrabble dictionary. Uh, outside of Scrabble, have you ever heard anybody use either of those? I've words? heard. I've heard people say Zah. Uh, really? Would have, I would have thought there was an apostrophe. But I always there. picture an apostrophe before uh, it. But I'm not from Scotland, so picture. I've never heard anybody say Joe. Okay. I have when I'm right. watching like um. Like I've heard fixer of, upper. I've heard about getting a and cup of and Jojo. A cup of Joe. Oh, yeah, that's J-O-E. That's J-O-E. Right. Uh, yeah, right. But Joe is very useful because the statistically, if you do the math, J is the worst letter to have. Oh. oh. I've Scrabble. not done that math. Because Z, there are plenty of other ways to get rid of it. There's lots of Z Have words. you done the math, Jim? I've, or I've just read the math. the math. I've done some math associated with not that math. Okay. Um, <laughs> the Joe math. You haven't yeah, done the but, well, because the to do that, it's more than just math. It's like running he, just it's enormous just numbers of simulations of games. I wonder if Beyonce's done the Jay-Z math. Huh. <laughs> Thank you. I think she did. <laughs> I think she did and decided it was worth it. It was worth it. Yeah. That's the kind of fine, highbrow, <laughs> well-considered... Such great pop culture reference, Josh. Well done. Well-considered humor that you'll find <laughs> on Walk About the Galaxy. Well, Addie, we yes. also have a game-related, in some sense... Okay. Stumper for you. Uh huh. Uh, that's timely as okay. well. Kansas City Chiefs <gasps> or something called Sporting Kansas City. Sporting KC. That's Sporting their soccer KC. club. Yes. Okay. Um, I didn't I, know so that. The Chiefs you just didn't? won the Super Bowl. Chiefs just won the Super Bowl. That go, go, Chefs. Go, Chiefs. Um, I guess the Chiefs. Okay, you're not I mean, a huge. The correct answer is the Kansas City Royals. The, the reason, the, well, <laughs> right. So the reason I the reason I gave you this one is because you're yes. a KC fan. You're I from am. Missouri. I'm from Kansas. Are I you was from born the Kansas in Missouri, side? But I'm from the Kansas side. Oh, okay. Yes. And but a Kansas City fan, and I knew you were yes. a big Royals fan, big which is Royals why fan. they're not an option available to you. Yeah, that to makes To make sense. it a real stumper. It's not a stumper. It would have been a, yeah. it would have, what's the opposite um, of stumper? So I, so the Slam Chiefs, dunk. Yeah, well, that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, easy peasy giveaway. It's yes. a softball. The softball. Um, <laughs> not a hardball. Yeah. But the Royals suck these days. The hey, Chiefs are great, so. Hey, what? watch your mouth. Oh, I apologize. The Royals <laughs> have not yet started the season, so they're that, doing great. That that's is true. true. They're undefeated <laughs> for the next. Tied for, for this, first. Yeah. For at least another week. <laughs> Spring training starts so next week. So why do... Uh, so, the, so the Chiefs have been around for all of my life, and yeah. like Kansas City is a huge football town. Like the Chiefs have always been popular, even when they've not been good. Um, unlike the Royals, um, and so I guess I root for the Chiefs, but I've like never actually been to a Chiefs game. I've been to uh -huh. Arrowhead for a Missouri football game, but not for uh -huh. a Chiefs game. Why? Why is it that um, our our non U.S. listeners are probably be groaning if, uh, but. For soccer, mm -hmm. professional soccer teams in the United States, teams are like the Orlando Magic, the San Francisco 49ers, mm -hmm. the Miami Dolphins, et cetera. For, for other for sports. For soccer, yeah. they're always like 
I don't even know what the name of the Orlando soccer team. It's like it's Orlando, Orlando City. City. Yeah. So a lot but of that or, comes that's because not a name of a team. That's but, just like but it yes, is. Orlando is a city. But it is. I mean, I think it's because they're trying to follow the tradition of European clubs, which is why I was saying, and they're non- usually sporting clubs, right? So that's where those names come from. Yeah. But it's just funny. They're just, it's very... It's paying, oh, it's, it's paying homage to the tradition of soccer. Okay, so football. Sporting Kansas City. Yes, they're the soccer team. They're, they've actually been very good yeah. uh, also in recent years. Okay. Um, but I've never been to one of their games because they are much more recent in our history. Right. Kansas, Kansas City had another soccer team a while back, and they had a basketball team for a short amount of time. Yeah. But, but like Orlando City is Orlando's male professional soccer correct. team. And the pride... And which is, that's a name. Are the women's well, the Orlando team. Pride. Mm-hmm. Right. That's good on you. So sometimes the, we call the, the men's soccer team the Lions. Right. There's a lion on the jersey along with all the advertisements, mm-hmm. but then it's just the Orlando City. Just call them the freaking Lions. But that's why the women are the Pride, because the Pride of Lions. Right. Great. Right. The great. Orlando Pride and the Orlando Lions. But that's not their name. They're not <laughs> the Detroit Lions. I know. They're the Orlando Lions. It's a different noming con- naming convention. Well, today... Although you would be hard pressed to believe it or guess it from what we've been doing up to now, <laughs> we're talking about some astrophysical stuff. Games. One of which is sex a quarks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Let's yes. just say that again. Sex a quarks. <laughs> Once you know there is such a thing as a sex a quark, how can you not talk about it? Is there yes. is there yes. an urban we'll dictionary entrance? Is there an urban dictionary entry for sex a quark? I don't there know. There will be soon. I don't know. I don't. I. I'd like to sex. I've a heard about how <laughs> you have to sex a baby chicken, but I don't know how you sex a quark. I don't either. The first of Let's many. Keep it PG. Terrible. Let's keep it PG. That's, We're gonna nothing, try. That's, no, I know. We have so far. G-rated. But I see where you want to go. Oh. <laughs> I want to go full sex a quirk. Um, How would you do that? Well, we'll get to that oh, okay. uh, later along with our other astrophysical topics mm-hmm. in space news. But first, this episode of Walk About the Galaxy is brought to you by the Planck Epic. Do you find yourself wistfully longing for simpler bygone times when time itself lost all meaning because the universe was less than one trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second old, like 10 million times less than that? Forget about the Gilded Age, the Age of Enlightenment, not to mention the period of abstract expressionism, art deco, and cubism. While they may all be much, much longer than the Planck epoch, only the Planck epoch can offer you an era before symmetry was broken Mm. and gravity was still as strong as the other forces. Coming to an end before before a photon had the time to cross a bubble of quantum foam, the Planck epoch is the ultimate good old day, or rather, the ultimate good old 5.4 5.4 <laughs> times 10 to the minus 43 seconds. 10 to the minus 44 seconds. What, how many days is that? Uh, 10 to the minus <laughs> 48 or 9 seconds. <laughs> days. <laughs> days. Days. Proof that shorter can be better. The Planck Epic. The quicker picker-upper. It's a paper towels of some kind. Bounty. You're correct. Yeah. Yes. Um... Good I was for, waxing good nostalgic for, there. Good for and cleaning up over. your quark soup. Bounty towels, good for cleaning up your quark soup. Mm-hmm. Your quark soup. I don't know, soup of quark We did have an astro quark somewhere. soup once. Yeah. Yeah. And the universe, just after the plank time, was a quark soup. Yeah, that's what I mean. There, so I, uh, I learned after I got the sponsor message in from the plank epic, I was checking out there a bunch of, so the plank epic. Was it highly red blue the, shift? Redshifted? Red it was highly redshifted. It was. The Planck epoch goes from t equals zero to t equals 5.4 times 10 to the minus 44 seconds, uh, which is called the Planck time. Mm-hmm. Right. And I yeah. guess Max Planck said, you know, you can construct a basic amount of time and a basic amount of mass, a basic length yeah. from these fundamental constants of the universe, like the speed of light yep. and Newton's big G, Newton's gravitational constant. Newton's big G. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. He had a big G. Yeah. Anyway, uh, those are cle- those are just sort of clever. You just like take these fundamental constants, which have these combinations of units of comp- of things like mass and time yep. and distance, and you can combine them in such a way so that you end up with just time. Just time. Or and just, when right. you do that, time. you get what's now called the Planck time, which is this ridiculously short period of time. Yep. And then if you say, uh, okay, I'll send 
the speed of light for a duration of the Planck time. You get the Planck length, mm -hmm. which is this uh, ridiculously tiny. And they're just like these funny combinations of C, the speed of light, and Newton's G, and the thing that we now call the Planck constant, right. uh, which is just cool and cool. weird, and they mean something. Yeah. And, and they're, I mean, they are the most natural set of units that you could use, the Planck time and Planck mass. And we have these arbitrary measures of of distance, you know, the meter and kilogram and all these in the second, but... Or the foot. The foot. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> U.S. Um, but uh, the most natural set of units to use is these units that you could build from the physical, fundamental physical... Because every, like an alien civilization would know what the fundamental physical constants of the universe are, and they would... They would build the Work. same set of units right. that we would we would build if right. we use those. Yeah. So. so it's cool. I do have to say, I think the fundamental unit of distance is um, 5K. Huh. <laughs> that's what I would go with. That's 5K. what you would go with? 5K. 5K, yeah. Oh, that's a horrible unit of distance. The 5K? Yeah. It's the – well, you know, it's a horrible unit. 26.2 miles is a horrible that unit of distance. That is even worse. That's an impossible a, unit that's of brutal. distance. Yeah. Um, Impossibly far. Space News, one web – Launched 34 satellites. What's one web? It is like Starlink. Well, it's it's, technically, a, a well, rocket it's a company. Launched 34 satellites. Oh yes. They were one web satellites. Yes. So this this company that's building so global this is a competing yes organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're planning to have 650 satellites to provide global broadband internet through satellites. Mm -hmm. Along the same lines as what SpaceX is doing with their Starlink satellites. Mm -hmm. So Star. Starlink now has 240 up. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And there's, they're there's in route 240 up. I don't know how many are functional. Operational. Yeah. They've launched 240, and they're talking about like 1,000 for like phase one, yeah. but maybe 20 or 30,000 for phase three. OneWeb is talking about 650. The difference is the reason that those numbers are so different is OneWeb satellites are in higher orbits, mm -hmm. and so they their radio beam that's transmitting and collecting data covers a bigger spot on the earth at a time yeah, 700 a miles footprint. a 700 mile wide footprint compared to only about 30 miles for the starlink satellites mm -hmm. but both of them as we've mentioned before are concerning for astronomers yes ah, if you're like bombarding the earth with huge amounts of radio yes that's going to suck for our radio telescopes. Exactly. Well, yeah. So, and, and it's the, there, there yes. are specific frequencies. So we've learned about yeah. this when we've done CubeSat stuff. But like certain frequencies are allocated to different uh, things. Activities. So, like, yeah. Some frequencies are allocated to TV, right? Some radio frequencies are allocated to radio. Some are allocated to satellite operations, right? Mm -hmm. um, and these are very. But there are also some that are still blocked off blessfully donated just to science right so they're still preserved what are, what are, just but, for but, science but, but i might are, be interested the, in things that are happening at those frequencies right also. well well in astronomy. tough tough yeah tough, tough doo -doo. put you have to put something in orbit too tough g's mm. for you yeah. um and also the the frequency that the one web is using for example Very is close. right next to the si some yeah. scientific frequencies yeah and there's not a perfect. There's not a wall in between, so your your radio transmitter can bleed over a little bit. Right. Yeah, and I was talking to somebody the other day about this, and they were saying that for like ground based um, ground based things that are transmitting, so ground based satellite or transmitters, there's a pretty hard cutoff. Like you have to put in hardware that makes the cutoff pretty sharp for uh -huh. those frequencies. But for space based things, they're much more lenient yeah. because. Companies can just be like, oh, well, we can't we fit that architecture in because of our mass constraints and oh. stuff like that. And so they put in things that have much broader and weird edge effects and stuff oh. like that that aren't as well constrained. Yeah. So a lot of satellites have much more fu so, fuzzy edges. So they're like, it's like if in a sort of radio parlance, if your radio station is 90.7, you're nominally transmitting at that, but there's some signal at 90.6 and 90.8. Right. And, uh, Maybe if if your one web satellite is at ninety point seven, but your scientific frequency is ninety point six, 
you're going to have some interference there. It's like when you're driving and you get up next to a car that's at a similar frequency and you start getting their radio instead of yours. Oh, I hate that. Do I've never that? had that. I think it's because, so I used to get it when I was, I used to listen to satellite radio, but I'd have to oh. you turn, you tune your car to a certain frequency to, to get the satellite radio in. And then if, it, in the old days, now I just have it in my car. Wow. But then you'd pull up to a car next to you and if they were on that frequency, you would start getting their radio instead. I have never experienced that. It also happens if you're like driving in more remote places and you're switching between frequencies. Sometimes you'll get two stations if you're okay. like in between. Huh. That's interesting. Voyager 2, our old friend. Oh, oh, but wait, but to tie back into that and SpaceX, SpaceX also this week said that they're probably going to put out an IPO for Starlink and separate Starlink from SpaceX. Oh, initial public offering. Yes. So it's going to spin off as its own separate probably. company. Interesting. How many companies does that dude have? Five. I don't think he has Solar City anymore. I don't think he Solar City has Solar is Earth. part of Tesla. Tes- oh yeah, it's part of Tesla now. Yeah. That's right. It started as separate, but now it's part of it. Yes, he's um, what's the name of the guy? Tony Stark. He's a Tony Stark yeah. kind of guy. Wouldn't reason. be surprised to see him flying around. What's that? <laughs> there goes Elon Musk in his Iron Man suit. Voyager Two, our old friend, which launched back in 1977 and provided the data that was the basis of my PhD dissertation in the 80s, is been operational beyond one of our definitions of the edge of the solar system. Uh, had a little glitch, but it's back in business. Do you know how many, how far away it is in light hours? So past Pluto. That would be a good trivia question. Uh, well, that would be a good trivia question. That's a bonus trivia. I'm asking you now. Hours. Answer now. Yeah. Light hours. Uh, Six. 30. 17. Exactly halfway in between <laughs> your two guesses nice. there. 17. We win. 17 light hours away. So oh, when, wow. it, when it, it had some little problem a couple of weeks ago, yeah. they try to guess, okay, what's the problem? They send a signal to it to fix the problem. They have to wait a day and a half to find out if it did right. the thing that it did. That That's just hard to imagine. Oh, so here's some nerd news I wanted to Oh, well, la, our last bit of space news. I'm so excited. <laughs> so excited. He wants to wow. Wow. Getting, <laughs> getting, getting, so, so, I just want to get to the sex of work. Uh, but uh, European Solar Orbiter is launching this Yay. weekend from here. Yeah. Uh, on a SpaceX. No, on no, an Atlas here. ULA. Five, ULA. Yeah. Florida. From uh, Florida. Launching from uh, Cape Canaveral. Near the Walkabout Studios. Cape Canaveral Space Force Base Station. <laughs> mm. It's now, yeah, so You're, it's now mm. Space Force Station. European Solar Orbiter is the name of it, which I find particularly uninspired naming. Yeah. That's true. Uh, but in any event, uh, that is launching, so we'll be getting all sorts of cool new solar data. So that's our space news. Nerd news. Oh, wait, and Christina Koch. Uh, oh, is back on the is Earth. Is back on Earth after the longest ever space flight by a woman, 330-something days, so almost a whole year. That's a long time. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so... Did she walk? She was... I saw a picture of her standing... I don't know how well she's walking yet, but yeah. um, it takes a couple of days for them to really be able to That's, walk much. Yeah. And if she's up, she was up there for that long, yeah, it takes That's a while. It's got to be, that has to be such a brutal transition yeah. to yeah. weigh nothing, to be floating around and not experiencing weight for a year. Even when you're doing it for like 30 seconds on an airplane flight, when you get to the like the straighten levels where yeah, you're going you're at like, 1G oh. for a while, you're like, ugh, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah. Um, Harley, anyway, nerd Qu- news. Harley Quinn, uh-huh. I've been seeing a is lot a character. of. I guess there's a movie coming out. Do you know what character she is? Harley Quinn uh-huh. is her character. So that's weird, right? She's the Joker's girlfriend or something? Sort of, yeah. Because wasn't there, there was a movie a few, this, this is showing my ignorance about these, these things. Yes. There was a movie, movie a few years ago with her in it. Yes. The Suicide Squad. Suicide or Squad. Or Suicides, not The Suicide. And didn't it bomb miserably? It didn't do very well. Yeah. yeah. So it's weird that they would make a... Sequel, yeah, or, or related film. I don't know if it's a sequel exactly. Maybe. I mean, I think that there's been a lot of interest in her character. Yeah, I think a, she was really good. In she that, was really good. In it. She was like the sort of the interesting and, part uh, of that movie. Margot Ro- Robbie mm-hmm. plays Harley Quinn. Anyway, yeah. that movie's coming out. There's a there. The movie's actually called like Birds of Prey or something like that. It's not called Harley Quinn. It's not called Harley Quinn. Okay. Because um, there's several other female superheroey type people in it. In too. it, I see. I only, for some reason, have picked up on that name. Right. Uh, um, I think that's, I mean, that's like what the they're using to, the marketing campaign is mostly about, about her. Yeah. Her, yeah. yeah. There was a, there was a preview during the Super Bowl. There was an ad, a trailer for a bunch of like other spinoff 
things like that that are now on like Disney Plus, I guess. Um, but there's this like a bunch of other just sort of spinoff shows that are related to Captain America and some other things. I don't know. There's a bunch of cool stuff that looks like these days, but they're on these streaming channels. There's so many streaming there's channels so I can't keep track. One of which is HBO Now, which has a new sci-fi series called Avenue Five, which it was which is created by the person who wrote uh, and created the show Veep, mm-hmm. which was a pretty funny show on HBO. Sort of a satirical look. Well, it would have it, it, satirical look at American politics in a bygone era when such things could be satirized. <laughs> uh, but Avenue Five is a sort of uh, goofy. Uh, science fiction comedy where there's a space freighter that's a tourist ship basically it's like a Caribbean cruise but it's instead of being a ship uh, instead of being an ocean liner it's a spaceship that's flying by Saturn it's like in WALL-E yeah and it's flying by Saturn and they have some accident that uh, then forms the sort of premise for the rest of the series not to give too many spoilers or anything but it was enjoy, you know, entertaining. Seen I've seen the first couple of episodes. Oh. It's uh, coming out now. I don't. I think there have only been three or so episodes, but they their light travel time. The reason I thought of it was the seventeen hour light travel time to the Voyager two spacecraft mm-hmm. to Saturn. Do you know what the light travel time to Saturn is? Ballparkish. Six it hours. A little bit. Three hours. No, it's a, an hour and twenty minutes. Right, it's eight. It's nine times oh, farther yeah. than the sun uh, than yeah. the Earth is from the sun. Uh, so, in any event, it's like an hour and twenty minutes, give or take, depending on exactly where the Earth and Saturn are relative to each other. But in this TV show, it was like thirty seconds. <laughs> of course, so it was. they they use that for comedic effect to have uh, the um, angry people on the Earth shouting at the people on the ship, and vice versa, and then having to wait for the delay. And right. can't somebody do something about that delay? <laughs> anyway, nope. This actually is an astronomy podcast, and mm-hmm. we are going to talk about sex of quarks and gravitational lensing, uh, but we've prattled on so long, I'm going to drop the trivia on you now. Oh, all right. So you can ponder it, and then we'll get into uh, our astrophysical topics. All right. Okay. The trivia, as I promised earlier, is um, mathematico-historical or something like that. <laughs> Mathematohistorical. Uh-huh. Uh as listeners of the podcast know, the Hamiltonian mm-hmm. is named after William Rowan Hamilton. Mm-hmm. The Lagrangian, which is another previous sponsor of the show, is named after Joseph Louis Lagrange. In other words, lots of functions are named after people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which of the following Mostly men. is not a real mathematical function? All of these are named after somebody. Which okay. one is not a real mathematical function? I'm going to be sad when I get this wrong. The Weierstrass function. Is that spelled with a V? It's with a W, and okay. I'm guessing on the correct pronunciation. Okay. W-E-I-E-R. Weierstrass function. Fermat's zeta function. The heavy side function. Euler's totient function. Totient is T-O-T-I-E-N-T. The Mobius, or Mobius, <laughs> oh, Mobius, okay. the Mobius function, uh-huh. and Minkowski's question mark function. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, there are six because I couldn't resist. They were all so, so yeah. delicious. <laughs> so that's the list of functions. Four, five of those are actual real mathematical functions huh. selected from a surprisingly long list of ridiculous sounding so many. mathematical yeah. function names out there. Oddly, none of which is the Dove, Cooney, or Caldwell or yet. AstroQuark function. Yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. yet. And some of these functions are absurd in terms of what they are. In yeah. my, some in people my, get asteroids named after them. Some people it, get functions named after them. Right. Anywho. Anywho. Sex of quarks. Sex of quarks. <laughs> We've held up for so I've long. I've been wanting to talk about sex of quarks for so long. <laughs> so why sex haven't well, we? Well, I've been wanting to talk about it since I discovered they existed when you posted about it two days ago or something. <laughs> I had no idea such a thing existed, and life instantly got better. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, if they exist. Uh, to be honest, so I've known about the existence of these things for a long time, but. What? And you kept it to yourself? Because here's why. Wouldn't because you? we tend to. <laughs> Uh, refer to them here as hexaquarks. 
here meaning the in US. this room? Oh. Because we have uh, oh. some kind of uh, taboo because thing about prudish. the word yeah. sex. Yeah. Yes. But in other places... We do call those astronomical measuring devices sextants. We do. Though. We do. We do. We do. And I laugh every it's time. From a, I from a better time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I, I guess I see why we do that, because I, I will giggle at every single... <laughs> <laughs> You're the problem. Well, I am the problem. Well, that was one of the things I was wondering about the sexaquark is how come they're not a hexaquark? Right. So sexaquarks and hexaquarks are the same thing. Kind, yeah, in a sense. And that's a collection of, I'm guessing, six quarks. Six quarks. Six. Yeah. But we the, the, only the have specific, three quarks. I know. The specific if there, was, if there was a mirror, we would have six of us. Yes. Yeah. But the specific sexaquark we're going to talk about today is is different from the kind of historical hexaquark things that we've had we've been known about for a while. Okay. What, what are the, so what I are haven't those? even known about the hexaquarks. Tell oh. us about the historical ones. So so quarks. So let's start at the beginning. All they right. Are, we've, we've that, talked they about are them before from the beginning because we are quarks uh, or astro quarks. Quarks are what most and of we, matter is made of. We right? are also quarks. Yeah. Special. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, so there are. Uh, six different kinds of quarks. Mm -hmm. We are we have we've gotten three of them here. We're the uh, strange, strange and charm, mm -hmm. and the top. top, and sometimes uh, bottom. And occasionally, uh, my wife bottom comes on. Uh, <laughs> beauty, beauty. <laughs> um, so top and bottom are also. Truth but there and were beauty. two two more that we didn't use because they're dumb, which were <laughs> up, and, up down. and down. But of course, those are actually those are the, the most, most common yeah. uh, quarks. Boring. So there's nothing about us that's common. No, so. no, we're we're uncommon and special. But uh, the the common quarks are up and uh, well, yeah, yeah, up, up and, and down. down. And those are the things that make up protons and neutrons. Mm -hmm. So two ups and a down, you got a proton. Two downs and an up, you got a neutron. Neutron. And those are the particles at the nuclei of atoms. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's a very common arrangement is three quarks together. And that's what, like I said, that's extremely it's common. Very common arrangement. Three quarks together. There we are. We're, we're in this range. This particular set of quarks <laughs> would not be a common one. But <laughs> strange um, charm and top doesn't yeah, occur in nature doesn't because occur in nature. strange and charm go together, top and bottom go together, up and down go together typically. Right. right. Something like that. Uh, so, so sets of three quarks <laughs> Every are... time Jim says something like that, I know I've said something very stupid. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that's... Uh, that's <laughs> It's close enough. That's Jim's code for you're completely wrong. <laughs> no, no, so no. So wrong that it will take too long for you to explain <laughs> how wrong you are on so many different levels. Instead, I'll just say something like something that. Something like that. Close enough. Um, so, yeah, three quarks are a common thing. You can also get sets of two quarks, uh, and those are things. They're not... By quarks? Not, I didn't not, know there were by quarks. You knew that they were quarks because you have played the game Collider. I was going to say, we've played Collider by Kit Caldwell. <laughs> a, uh, I was just trying probably to... Probably our audience has not heard of that. That's because it hasn't a, come out for public, public release yet, right? Special order. But this is a fun, like, uh, yeah, that's a... a, a uh, High play with Collider quarks. thing uh, based, uh, based board game that is actually awesome. We will have the, the creator of that game on the show. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. Oh, yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Um, we and, do a live uh, playthrough. So anyway, two and six quarks are, are uh, arrangements that happen commonly in nature. But if you work the math enough, you can uh, make yourself again with the math, theoretically at least, uh -huh. uh, combinations of six quarks together. Sure. You said two and six. You meant two and three. Two so and then three. you can make. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I meant. Mm -hmm. I said uh, two, two and three are common. Mm -hmm. uh, and but but you can make six. What do you have to do combos. to make six? Well. I don't know what high you have energy to do. Stuff? Yeah, yeah. So if you if you mash enough quarks together at high enough energies, some you of them will stick. Some will stick together as, as a six quark combo. Now, uh, we've known about this for a while. Hexaquarks are a thing. That are have they been, stable? Is but they're not. So the, these typical hexaquarks are Jim. not stable. Okay. Are yeah. you deliberately saying hexaquark instead of sexaquark? Right. Because I'm going to be at the sexaquark in a second. I'm going to differentiate. Hexaquark from, from the, from the hexaquark. Oh, because okay. I'm going to use hexaquark for the old versions of these. These work. You know, a typical old hexaquark was like put two regular three quark guys together, and they're roughly bound together, and that's a mm -hmm. an old hexaquark. Okay. Would that, would which that are sometimes called thing? like a di baryon because a baryon is three quarks three. together. Yeah. You why put not them a bi baryon? Well, you could do that's, that if you want. Yeah. Why do we use diatomic instead of biatomic? I'm not sure. I don't know. But are those Huron. are those hexaquarks stable, or are they one of these no. things that like hangs they together for ten to the minus thirty right. seconds? They are not, and so they're not. Um, the cool thing about this this new idea, this new thing that the the new paper that we're kind of talking about today is, and now we're calling them sexaquarks. Yeah, we are. Hell yeah, because these guys were are uh, European that uh, oh, were working okay. on this. Less the Europeans. Sex oh, sexy quarks. Oh god. 
Sex up uh, quarks. Sex, sexy quarks are awesome. Um, so sexy quarks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hard, hard pressed to tell from this show, but <laughs> <laughs> sexy quirks. Uh, this would be a serious. So this particular sexy quirk is two ups, two downs, mm-hmm. and oh, two yes. stranges. Oh. Only, only two ups and two downs. Two ups, two downs. Okay, two stra- yeah. <laughs> so it's short. As, up, up, uh, down, down. Strange, strange. strange. It's like strange. a it's like a video game code. Is I'm in, sad that we're not a part of this. Well, Josh. is it in that exact order? Up. Up, I would, well, no. I mean, it's, there's no order. It's all <laughs> up, down, strange, strange, strange down, up, up, down. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you put those together in the right configuration, mm-hmm. you can make a stable <gasps> sex quirk. Okay, oh. so that means it lasts for a long time. That's for a long time. In fact, yeah, so, it does. so so here's the thing: is the, these things are <laughs> if it's, yeah, it's for <laughs> Dini, the, the, the key is to go up and down more than once, <laughs> and then and a be a strange. little bit strange. Um, okay, <laughs> I'm getting lost. Then it can last. <laughs> I, I'm a nerd, so I don't really know what you're talking about. It can last a really but, long um, time. <laughs> uh, uh, the, yeah, the idea is if the mass of this thing, so the, here's, the, here's the fun thing. Oh, okay. It's, now it's going to get fun. It's, it's going to get, it's going to get, well, so how do you know, <laughs> how do you know the mass of a thing? Like a proton and a neutron. You put it on a scale. Have masses that are similar to one another. Yes. But it's actually not necessarily because they're just made of the same set of cor- ups of, and downs, ups, up and downs. Uh, or it's not that the ups and downs are the same mass. The mass of a of a composite particle like a proton or a neutron is determined not only by the mass of its constituents, but by how energy. they're arranged, right? Because energy and mass are closely related, right? Einstein, Einstein, C squared. It's always back to Einstein. So you can make these six quark systems, these sexa quarks, with all kinds of different masses. Depending on how you arrange the the quarks in that thing, this this I think merits a brief pause for just reflection on what you said there. That mass and energy are interchangeable. That's crazy. And the thing that holds stuff together is energy, which somehow can be a greater or lesser part of the total thing that we think of as mass right. of the system. So that's actually some total amount of mass energy of these things. But it can be more or less energy, and therefore more or less mass. Is that a that's right. fair way to say it? Yeah, that's a, that's a fair way of saying it. Now, now we know that it wasn't completely stupid because you didn't, didn't say, say close enough like or something like that. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. So yeah, so um, so we've discovered a way to arrange these these uh, six quarks together that uh, is very very stable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In fact, the, 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 I mean, they're so stable and, that the lifetime is far greater than the age of the universe. Yes. So, so nice. that means That's any of these that were stable. created in the early they're universe. They're immortal. Yeah, they're immortal in a sense. So any of them that were created in the early universe should still be around now. Oh, where are they? And because there are two up course, two down, the, the, the total charge on this thing is zero. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. They're very stable and mm-hmm. they have uh, a mass. So they have a mass but no charge. They have a mass, mass but no charge. They, here's the awesome thing, and the reason why we're talking about them, or the main reason why we're well, talking about the them. the main reason is because they're, they're called, called sex, sex quarks. Yes. And they're, even if they were unrelated to astronomy, we'd be talking, we'd be about, talking them about them about for the entire quarks. episodes. But they're related to astronomy because if they exist, mm-hmm. they very well may be dark matter. Dark matter. What? Right? Yeah, because they have a mass, but they don't really right? interact so they with interact charge gravitationally, with gravitationally, but they don't interact. Uh, why don't they interact with light? they don't have a charge. Uh, no. they, don't, they don't interact so very they well with light wouldn't. because they have low mass and they have, or not low they're mass, this the, the big? low mass isn't the thing. But they're, <laughs> that yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously the physics of these things is ridiculously complicated. To, Can to, we make them in uh, like the Large Hadron Collider? Well, that's collider? the thing is, these are, as of yet, these are just purely theoretical things. Oh. So we don't know if they actually exist in nature. <laughs> 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 that's a bummer, I know. But they're in. They're they're based on the theory that we have for how you put quarks together, which is called, which has the so fancy name of quantum electrodynamics. No, quantum chromodynamics. Yes, quantum yes. chromodynamics, which is the the theory of quantum quarks colors. and the things colors. that bind quarks together, which are called gluons, which yes. is an awesome name for a particle. It is uh, that glues things together. Um, but anyway, they predict the possible existence of these things. We have to f- see if they really exist. And so you're right. Particle accelerators are a great place to start. But if it turns you, out that if s- you're trying to make a sex quark in a oh. particle accelerator, you just have to be careful you don't get any glue on you. Mm-hmm. That's just, a stretch. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's a stretch. 
But anyway, we haven't, there have been no, because this is a fairly new idea, there have been no uh, attempts so far to look for these things in particle accelerators. Until recently. Until fairly uh, recently. Is the energy needed? Because we my, have the energy needed. Their, the, their masses are low enough that they're, they're not, slam in fact, together. the fun thing is their masses are low enough that they're below the level that we typically look for interesting particles. Oh. Which mm-hmm. means, and that's one reason why You can make it in your kitchen, for. maybe. No. no. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like uh, Ice Nine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or a peach cobbler. Oh. Um, you can't make it in the kitchen, but you could make cobbler. it in a particle accelerator. But usually in particle accelerators, we're looking for these crazy... Weird particles that have high masses, lots of energy. Yeah. Right. And so that's what our particle detectors are tuned to look for. Yeah. But they're not it's tuned to look to for these lower mass things. Yeah. So we need and a so tuner. It's possible we have made these things at particle accelerators. We just haven't seen them because we weren't tuned to look for them. We weren't at the right frequency. Uh, we did recently, there was uh, one experiment that mm-hmm. we did uh, mm-hmm. to try and look for them, and we did not find them. In the Babar detector. The Babar detector, which is an awesome name for a detector. Did you ever Seriously? read Babar? Babar? Babar. I think so, when I was a kid. The yeah. elephant. That's what it's called. Um, and they did not find any, but the lack of, uh, you know, it wasn't a mini sigma uh, lack of a detection. So that is, it was like a 90% pro- they're not there, 10% they're there, which doesn't <laughs> sound good, but... <laughs> but in statistics, it doesn't well, mean it's it, pretty... But it, that really doesn't mean There's a confidence exactly level that. of 90%, so it's like... Okay. There's still a, like one in ten million chance that they exist or something, right? No, higher than that. Higher than that. Oh, okay. They, oh. they very they they make so we need to look for these more this carefully been, because this has really been an emotional roller coaster. It has for been. Me. It has been because you thought for a while sexy quarks are dark matter, a thing. And they then might you're like, be. They're dark matter. The thing is with the dark matter, we have all these possible candidates for what dark matter is, but none of them are very likely. So even though it's Reasonably right. likely this doesn't exist. It's still one of the better candidates for dark matter because well, it might. So, okay, it's so just so I understand. So the, the, the sex of quark, there are some sex of quarks that it's combination of six quarks yes. that lasts a long time that's yep. difficult to see. Mm-hmm. So there could be a bunch of them out there and we would not have known it up to now. And we think that that can happen based on our understanding of how quarks stick together. Right. Do we think that things go on in the universe that would happen to stick quarks together that way? In other words, yes. early in I, the universe. I know that if I take super glue and stick a Funko Pop onto a Darth Vader helmet, What's it will stick Funko there. Pop? Those little pop things over there. Oh, it'll, I it'll, it'll stick there probably for the age of the universe, but <laughs> I wouldn't expect effective. to see that floating around right. in space because there's not that process going on. Right. So, so you need some way to make these things. Is, so, that, is, that a, is that a thing that's predicted by our theories that says, yeah, and you would expect two ups, two downs, and two stranges to come so, together. In the Big Bang. Yes, in the early universe. In the early so, universe. So, so in, back, the plank, in the Planck? During the Planck Not during the Planck era. Right? After, after that. After after much the, after. There's no, nothing before. Happens. Oh, there's nothing before. Uh, but, but after the Planck era, then you have this Epic. quark soup, quark soup where, where the universe is so hot and dense soup. that quarks exist independently by themselves. And as the universe cools down, they settle they into should have, so they, sh- they should have made mm-hmm. some. And so and if, they would still if be around. sex of quarks are real, then it's very likely that at that time in the universe, but why would they be real? So if they're not real, doesn't the non-detection in the Bybar detector mean that we our quantum chromodynamics is wrong? Right. So that's that's well. No. It, it just means that. So it's not everything that is predicted by this theory is necessarily a thing that is going to be real. It's like with general relativity. Like, Did, are, we we look at the theory and you can. Screw with the equations and find things like wormholes. Do the wormholes really exist? We don't know. They might. They yeah, might I've not. seen that. I've seen it. You just punch a hole in a piece of paper. And that's boom. Wormhole. Boom. No, wormholes. that's true. Yeah, yeah. You get from one side of the paper to the other. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Wormhole. So maybe they exist. Maybe they don't. But this is the same thing with with quantum chromodynamics. It, it's it's not a well enough understood theory to know whether every prediction of it is going to be mm. a thing that actually happens. So in a sense, you're right. In a sense, you're right. If they don't exist, then that means whatever that you know that branch that they were working on in cro- that that's not right. Right, they did something It seems wrong. like from your explanation, which was brilliant and lucid Thank and you. perfectly understandable, Thank you very much. was very fundamental part of quantum chromodynamics. Uh, I don't think it's a very fundamental part. It's just a... Well, then your explanation obviously was terrible. Obviously it was terrible. I don't think it was terrible. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I think it was fine. Burn. <laughs> hmm. So, okay. we'll see. All right. But well, sex of quarks. Uh, we're praying. Sex of quarks. That'd be amazing. Sex also, of quarks would be amazing. It would be great. I mean, if we... 
you know, if we find one of these in a particle detector, or, you know, then uh, yeah. that's going to mean maybe we've explained dark matter. Very exciting. That would be exciting. I want to talk a little bit about gravitational microlensing. Well, we're not going in to. In neutrinos, but... Just kidding. But, <laughs> but, but first, uh, I want to have your thoughts oh, yeah. on today's trivia. Okay. So which of the following six okay. functions named after a person is not the name of a real mathematical function? Your choices are the Weierstrass function, mm -hmm. Fermat's zeta function, the Heaviside function, mm -hmm. Euler's totient function, mm -hmm. the Mobius function, mm -hmm. Minkowski's question mark function. This is a tough one uh, because... I don't know. I, I, I kind of fancy I myself of a theoretical physicist, and, and I, I have not heard of most of these. I've heard all I've of heard the names. I think all of the names I've heard, except but not always with the, the second word in the, in the combo. Right. 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 So I think there's only one of them I definitively know is an actual function. There's one, there was one that I would expect that you would side. know. The heavy side function is a real function. Yeah. That is true. And I love this one because... Heaviside is the name of this guy, George yeah. Heaviside or something like that. Of course, English. it's George. <laughs> I, may, I should double. I don't, I'm not 100% sure. It's George. Person, <laughs> but it's H-E-A-V-I-S-I-D-E. -E, and mm -hmm. he was an English mathematician. And what's what I love about it is that his last name happens to very poetically describe this function. Like the way, yeah. Which is a super simple function. Yeah. It's just a step function yep. that goes from a low side to it's a high side. It's used a lot side. in filtering. <laughs> For and so, yes, and so there is a heavy side in the heavy side mm -hmm. function. Yeah, it's, so it's used a lot beautiful. in filtering, which is relevant to the radio astronomy talk we were talking about earlier. Yes, right. yeah, yeah. You are both correct. That is a real function, Great. and I had I knew We've you would know it. Five. I knew <laughs> you would know it, it but I just wanted to talk about the heavy side. Um, function. I assume the last one is a thing. The that's, question that's mark That's weird one. enough that... Oh, yeah. you guys yeah. are collaborating on your answers. We are. Now. We're collaborators we're now. Together yeah. today. I guess there's nothing in the... Let me yeah. check the rules. Do the rules say we can't the, collaborate? The rules don't say you can't collaborate. We are competing, though. I feel... So so Mobius is a guy that he did stuff. Mobius. He, he a made strip. a strip. He's got the strip <laughs> named after him. I feel like that's one that he would have thrown in there because he's like, oh, they know the name. Okay. They're going to assume he has a function. Okay. So if I was guessing, I'd guess, guess the Mobius, Mobius? function. I'm going to guess the first one. The, the Weierstrass mm -hmm. function. Because it's a complicated name. I just, yeah. Actually, it's Fermat's zeta function. I mm. knew it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I knew it was Fermat. So here are, <sighs> Fermat was a real person, as yes. you correctly identified. These are all real people. Uh, Fermat's got He has his, a theorem named after him. He's yeah, got he's his got, theorem got last, last and theme. things yeah. like that, but I could not find any function named after him. And just to make absolutely sure, I threw in zeta. Instead of just making it Fermat's function, right? Uh, I just okay. threw in zeta yeah, to there be. There is a zeta app. function. Yeah. There's uh, other. There are several yeah, zeta functions. Yes. So several Riemann, people have zeta. Riemann zeta function, right. etc. The Weierstrass function is an interesting one. This is a function that's continuous everywhere, but is not differentiable anywhere. Whoa. Huh. We won't go further on that because if you know what that means, great. If you don't, also, also great. great. Also <laughs> great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we already talked about the heavy side function, Fermat's zeta function. I made up Euler's totient function. Totient. I knew you wouldn't guess it because you wouldn't guess that I would make up a weird word like totient to stick in the middle there. You might. I don't. You might. Uh, but that's a weird. Euler's got all sorts of stuff. Thing. Yeah. Also. That function counts the positive integers up to a given integer n that are relatively prime to n. Okay. Okay. Moving on. The, <laughs> the Mobius function is one of the weirder ones, I think. It's, it sounds twisted. It has it, – it is all – oh, that's good. Thanks. Uh, it has a value of either 1, 0, or minus 1. That's the only okay. three values that that function has. Okay. Uh, depending on how the argument of the function can be factored into prime numbers. Mathematicians are freaking that's obsessed weird. with prime yeah, numbers. Yeah, prime numbers is like – uh, and then, of course, I had to include Minkowski's question mark function, which I had never heard of before. Of course. Uh, and it's actually written question mark of X oh, equals. It's not just like a LaTeX. It was probably when he was writing awesome. it, the LaTeX messed up and it just put a question mark in there on accident. Yeah. And then he kept I it. I don't know. I didn't think you were just allowed it's to a, do that. It's like a, random characters like that's like sure. Prince calling himself this whatever. Is, yes. You can pick whatever letters you want. Why can't you just use this characters? Is, I have never heard of This is the question mark function. The I'm going to make an upside down question mark function. The, the question mark function maps quadratic irrational numbers to rational numbers between zero and one. I'm not sure I understand what that means. I don't, I don't know what a quadratic <laughs> irrational number is, but what it, but in some simple 
and therefore probably completely incorrect sense, the question mark function of some irrational number equals a single rational number between zero and one. Okay. And that and it works that way for all those A quadratic numbers. irrational number is an irrational number that happens to be the root of a quadratic equation with inter- integer coefficients. Okay. <laughs> Microlensing. There was a, an, a fun story about, uh, we've talked about gravitational lensing before. We have. This is another consequence of Einstein's general theory of relativity, or which it's not really a consequence of it. Einstein's general theory of relativity explains this, mm-hmm. uh, which is that mass deforms space-time in some way so that dis- objects behind a mass, the light from it gets distorted and bent as it goes by that mass, just the way a glasses lens bends the rays of light passing through it. Mm-hmm. And so what that means is sometimes even in our own galaxy, we can be looking at a star and all of a sudden that star will go bloop de bloop <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> just and like that. Uh, that means getting a little bit brighter and a little bit dimmer. And that's because a happened to pass behind some massive thing which lensed or, you know, produced a different sort of image uh, and and made more of the light from that distant object arrive at our telescopes. And uh, this particular one has to do with observation of some stars, as I said, within the Milky Way. And they saw that due to the blipty bloop several times over the course of a year or two, periodically, and just by analyzing, sort of like when you take your glasses to the optometrist, you hand them the glasses, they come back and they tell you what the prescription is. You don't need to tell them the prescription. They can shine light through it and say, oh, it's bending light this way. Right. This is what your prescription is. So when we look at the blip de bloop signal <laughs> with our telescopes, we can figure out what is the mass that's doing the gravitational lensing. So the foreground thing was two, was a couple of small stars orbiting each other. We can precisely figure out how big those stars are, where they are, what their orbit is like, and everything, even though we can't see them just by how they're lensing the light behind them. That's kind of awesome. It's also frustrating, right? Because when they first <laughs> saw this blip de bloop they got it super excited. But they didn't know. Like, stars change their brightness for lots of reasons, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, they, they sometimes, like Betelgeuse is doing now, right? They, they just, get dimmer or whatever oh, because yeah. of natural variation in their thing, or sometimes it's... It's just they get dimmer because there's a planet or something passing between us. and the, But this is uh, yet another reason why a star would get bright and dim because of gravitational lensing. And if you just see it once, it's really hard to figure out what happened. But I guess they saw it a bunch of times. This one a bunch of times. And this technique, because you can figure out from that lensing what you're looking at, is a technique that has been used and will continue to be used to sort of serendipitously discover exoplanets that right. we would not otherwise see because the exoplanet is like a little defect in that gravitational lens that produces a characteristic blop on the blipty bloop. <laughs> so if you see blipty blop bloop, there's a Ooh, planet. There's a planet. Program we have there's here. a planet. There. That's how that uh, high schooler discovered that planet around. It's a blipty blop bloop. He's a bloop. He's like, oh, blop. Bl- blop. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. <laughs> <laughs> while it may have felt like a trillion Planck times, <laughs> it was actually a hell of a lot more than yeah. that. It was <laughs> way, way, way more. Way more. If you liked this episode of Walk About the Galaxy, write us a review in quantum foam and spray yes. it all over the space-time continuum. Be sure, <laughs> be sure to like us on Facebook to get all our updates and check out our website at walkaboutthegalaxy.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Walk About the Galaxy, where you can see the inevitable increase of entropy. Sad. <laughs> Catch up on old episodes wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks to our listeners in Alberta, Canada, and around the world. Follow us on Twitter. At walk underscore the underscore galaxy. And ask us questions anywhere using hashtag walk about the galaxy. Our theme music was composed by Richard Jerusic, our production assistant and video guru is Diego Rodriguez. I'm Josh Caldwell. I'm Maddie Dove. And I'm Jim Cooney. We're the Astrocorks, signing off until the next episode of Walk About the Galaxy. Boop! <laughs> Sex cork.